Hello and welcome back to Collection Log Completionist, the series where I attempt to fill in a lot of slots in the collection log. In the last video, we got several pets, and in this video, I don't think I'm going to be able to up that. There's no way I get multiple pets in this video, too. Right? Starting things off with a little bit of next with my buddies, and we managed to nab ourselves a pretty juicy drop. Oh, dude, we actually got something. We got the Nihil Horn. Hey, big grats to Smithy for getting his Zerite crossbow. That is actually unique for him. That's awesome. And there is the split from the Nihil Horn. 67.4 mil. Thank you very much. Yep, you have, I have been reported for scamming. That's okay. That is exactly what I did, to be honest. And we are now at a 300 mil cash stack. I'd say we've been doing pretty good recently. But real quick, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is not the VPN, uh, no, not the food thing. Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a fantastic free-to-play RPG that features an immense story, engaging battles, and awesome characters. But instead of talking through it, let me just spell it out for you. Riveting PvP battles where you can strategize against other players' teams. An astronomical amount of updates that bring all sorts of great new content. Incredible graphics that put other games to shame, and super fun gameplay loop that keeps you engaged and provides meaningful progression. Now, if that's not enough to sell you on this, then you might must not have been paying attention, but that's okay because Raid's fourth anniversary is here and there's a lot to be excited about. They've got dedicated offers, free gifts, promo codes, events, and a brand new fusion event where you can have anniversary themed legendary champions. Right now you can use the promo code 4 years raid to get 4 skill tomes legendary, 4 energy refills, 400 energy, and 400,000 silver, which will really kickstart your fun during the event. You'll also be able to take a trip down memory lane with your own recap video containing all of your stats from Raid. Plus, if you're an Amazon Prime member who just got Genbo, keep your eyes out for their newest drop with powerful savage gear of available now until March 30th. Now wait, there is even more because if you're a new player, you should use my link or scan the QR code on screen right here to get a free starter pack with this great in-game loot to help you get started. Thank you so much to Raid for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Next thing I want to go for that is one of our cards is the Staff of the Dead from Krill. It is a 1 in 512 drop, so I really don't expect to get it, but if we just keep chipping away at it, hopefully we'll get it before the event's over. I completely forgot to mention it in the video, but when I say things like the next card we're going for, the next item we're going for, I was taking place in a little event with some friends where you had to go for specific items to get points for your team. So that's what I'm talking about in the video. I haven't completely lost it yet. Oh, what do you know? There's a Zami Spear at 562 kill count. I would say awesome. At least we made some money. But that boy is only 5 million gold now. That's kind of depressing. Kind of hurts my feelings a little bit. But hey, it's okay. 5 mil is 5 mil. That's what I always say. Oh, okay. And then same kill from a minion. We get a God Sword Shard too. Okay. Also, I cannot overstate how good the new Imbued Heart is for Zami here. Because you pop it. It gives you an even higher Mage level. Some more defense against the Mage minion. Plus, if you do have to brew, it only has a 5 minute cooldown. As opposed to the old one. Which I think had like a 7 minute cooldown. So you can repot faster. I don't know. This item is absolutely huge. Not enough people are talking about how good this thing is. And last kill of the trip. What do we see? But another God Sword Shard too. Because honestly, why not? Check it out, folks. That is 600 kills at Zami, I know it's nothing too insane or impressive to people, but of course I did get spooned on this account, so I haven't really grinded Zami like crazy. But I think it's pretty cool. We do not have a staff of the dead from this boss, but that's not very surprising because let me show you my log after I kill these minions because uh, I forgot it was just 30. Okay, we're safe at the POH. Let's open up the Krill log real quick. I've gotten three staffs of the dead and 600 kill count. I think I'm not the right person to be doing this task. There's no way I get a fourth one. But uh, if I find the motivation, I'll keep going for some trips. Because honestly, this is pretty chill. I can just throw on some music, do that method, never get hit by Krill, and pretty much just be completely safe. And the trips last for like 25 to 30 kills. This trip ended because I ran out of Bastion potions, not because I was out of food or prayer. So I'm thinking of maybe getting rid of one of the brews and just bringing another Bastion potion to see if we can last even longer. I don't know. Dude, what? You have got to be kidding me. No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Sammy Hilt? <laughs> Ah, uh, we need the Bandos hill, not the Zami hill. That is actually tragic. I mean, it's five mil. Five mil is five mil. I won't complain, but it is the same drop rate as the staff. So this is the part where I scream and go wham, wham, wham. But you know, I'll take the five mil. I actually will not complain about that. I'm happy ish. I just found this random master clue in my bank. I don't really know why I have it in here, but we'll open it because we need the uh, 442k. That's gonna help out a lot, actually. Thank you. What is going on here? We got another Zami Spirit. 760. No, 676. Dude, I'm so sleep deprived. Listen, my dog keeps jumping in the bed with us at night. I cannot get a wink of sleep. All right, listen, don't judge me. But still awake enough to do the Tebow Zami method to get a second Zami Spirit. Today's a good day. 
I think we'll at least go to 700 before I lose my sanity. Dude, no way! We actually got a Staff of the Dead. Oh my gosh, wait, wait, get my camera out, wait, get the camera out. Ka-chink! There's a screenshot for the bingo, absolutely carrying the team. The Giga Chad Shelby getting every Zami drop again. He just can't be stopped. All right, chat. I mean, YouTube, uh, I'm lost. I'm just going to take a moment to appreciate how absolutely ridiculous this Krill log is. Four Staffs of the Dead, five Zami Spears, two Hilts, and just under 700 kills. That ain't right. Well, the roll we got landed on a Light Bearer, so that's the next item that we need. But we still need a Bandos Hilt, and I kind of feel like trying out another method with the Bofa here at Bandos. You basically start here, attack him at the right tick, and you just keep running north to the altar. You use the altar as a red click to get past him, and you keep flinching him with your Bofa hits, and then you click the door to get past him again. It's a very interesting method. I've never tried it before. If I die, it was good knowing you all. Also going to make good use of the combat achievements I got. I only have to pay 125k to get a private instance. One, because Bandos is super busy and it's hard to find a free world that is also having good ping for me. And two, because it makes sure that Bandos will always spawn in the same tile. In the public instances, there's like a 1 in 8 chance he spawns off one tile in a certain direction and that can mess up the whole method. So I'm just going to do the private instance. I don't want to deal with it. Oh cool, look at that. We got a long bone from Bandos, my actual favorite drop in the game. I'm completely honored to get this. Thank you so much, Gardor. Okay, wait. We just got a two Grandmaster combat tasks. Keep away and org killer. I have no idea what those are for, but let's just pretend that I'm so good at this game that I get Grandmaster tasks without even trying, you know, because, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's just the case. I, I am just that good. All right, I'm going to try to show y'all an example kill. I'll probably link a much better guide in the description if I can remember. But here we go. We're going to start on this tile here. Right when Bando spawns, we're going to shoot him with the Bofa immediately and then click the tile or the click the altar to run under him. And then every four ticks, attack with the Bofa, just like you're attacking normally. And then when you get to the altar, you just click this one and run back. And he will not attack you. You might think that's kind of crazy. I don't know why the hell he's not attacking me. But it's actually when you hit an enemy, it's like the same tick your attack hits. They're flinched for a certain amount of time and they cannot attack you back. It's just the way it works. I don't know why this game works the way it does, but that's why we love it. And you can literally just run back and forth like this and he never hits you. It is pretty awesome. If you want to, you can walk those last three tiles and you will conserve a little bit of run energy. But if you're in pretty good gear, you don't really need to do that. And I didn't bring any stamina this trip on action accident but it's kind of working out really well so yeah i like this method i died once trying to learn it and i was thinking about quitting it because you do sometimes take an insane amount of damage from the minions but as long as you keep some food in your inventory and you heal up instead of risking it like an idiot like me it's really good all right a drop finally a god sword shard one now i know it's not really much of a drop but hey we've gotten two out of the three god sword shards so far in this video maybe we'll finish a whole blade all right, the end of my first trip here with this method. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got Addy Ore. We got up to 1,277 KC, which let me check my little uh, my little kill tracker. That means we got... Oh, God, I'm actually going to die from the minions. The minions at this boss are insanely strong. Seriously, I swear they've got like 100% accuracy. Do not at me. Um, and I just ran out of charges on my crystal legs. Holy smokes. Okay, so we did 62 kills in the log, 9 of which were last trip. So we got 51 kills this trip as my uh, first real attempt at this method. I did screw up a couple times, and uh, look at me, I'm not even praying range. As you can see, I'm a little bit tired, but 51 kills in one trip. I think it's time to say goodbye to my all my uh, old tile markers here because I think I like this method a lot better than the old one we used to use. Uh, I did not realize how many charges each crystal shard gave. I thought maybe each crystal shard gave 10 charges. It gives 100 charges each, so now my crystal helm only has 921 charges, but my body and legs have 17,000. Dude, the only place the Bofa is good for me is Bandos. That's it. That's the only place this is good for me, so I just wasted so much money for no reason. And check this out, 1,300 kill count at Bandos, another big old milestone. I've been here for a little while, actually. No drops yet, but all that matters is that we get that hilt, so let's keep it up. And because I'm me, I have received another long bone from General Grardor at 1,319 kill count. Honestly, better than the drop. I mean, who could ever be disappointed about getting a long bone? It's just so, look how cool it is. It's like a big L. Because that's me taking the L instead of getting drops. So I've started bringing the Explorer's Ring to Alk stuff during the trips, and I think it's pretty worth it. That's 800,000 GP. I usually only get like 100,000 or so just from the drops, maybe 150k. Yeah, I think we're at least breaking even on the normal drop, so all of the special loot will be big profit. I'm going to be honest, I don't know how rare a Dragon Medhelm is from General Grardor, but honestly, it looks so good. I'll take it. I, I won't complain. 
Oh, baby, yes, finally, let's go. I think we were at like 140 kills or something like that this session, so it's good to see a Bandos drop. Bandosian, Tacit's 19.9 mil. If you could just nudge that up to 20, we'll just pretend it's 20 mil. It makes me feel better to think that it's 20 mil. There's our first drop. It's not the hilt that we need for the bingo, but it is the most expensive drop from Bandos, I'm pretty sure. I'll take that, man. Oh my gosh, I have to end this Bandos trip for the stupidest reason I have ever seen. Do you see it? Anyone who has a very keen eye can see it. That's right, I'm out of death runes. I didn't bring enough death runes. I put like 10,000 in the pouch, and after like two or three trips, they are all gone. That is so heartbreaking, man. I guess I could do one more kill, but it's kind of hard to kill the minions and keep you healing, it, healing up, you know. So anyways, I guess I'll just go until I run out of food. But yeah, oh, I still have like 40 minutes worth of divine left. Okay, I know I always say that the long bone drop is funny, but come on now, it's getting ridiculous. That's our third one. I'm just kidding. Yes, we got another long bone. Let's go. All right, this is actually going extremely well. Look, I only have one more dose of Bastion Potion. We barely used any food, honestly. I think that this might be sustainable without Blood Barrage. Maybe I'll bring Thralls next time I go. Anyways, the point of this clip, 1,400 kill count at General Grardor. I gotta say... Boss is kind of fun. I guess I could see why some people enjoy doing this. I'm here. Like, look at my kill count. 224 kill count here. Plus, I left the room earlier to go. So, that's 30 extra. So, that's over 250. I mean, how many kills in one trip is that? It's a lot. I'm not willing to do the math, but I'm pretty sure it's like 60 to 70 kills in one trip. And we've still got a little bit in us. So, this method's nasty. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The God Sword Shard 1. We have officially completed a god sword shard in these uh trips we've done at god wars recently so yeah pretty cool i will take that that's a massive accomplishment i think i mean i, I mean it's pretty cool at least oh baby that looks so good 19.7 mil for those tasks let's throw it in we're back at over a 300 mil cash that could dip down because i had to buy a bunch of supplies like a thousand super stores a couple hundred divine supers and stuff like that but we're back at 300 mil Feels good, man. Oh, wait, no, I was wrong. I'm actually missing the Shard 3, not the Shard 1. So, uh, yeah, I guess we didn't finish a Godsword Blade. Embarrassing. I usually don't like posting clips where I'm super negative, but I decided I'm going to grind some 400 TOA. I get all the way to Wardens. The run is going beautifully. It's the last Red Skull phase, and the world lags, so I die. And there is another combat achievement completed, Resourceful Raider. I don't really know what it's for, but it's a master task, so I'm going to say I'm proud of it. Also, this was a 400 TOA run. I think I'm going to start getting back into these, even though I was a little bit mad at that last one that I lost due to lag at the Red Skulls. Look at that unique percentage chance, almost 9% chance. That is ridiculous. So let's see, did we get it? No, it's been so long since I've seen a purple, but hopefully running these 400s will get me one. Also, I don't even know if I mentioned it, but one of the items we need is a light bearer for the little bingo event. So I'm really hoping to get one. This is probably the only time I'm ever going to actually <laughs> hope to get a light bearer. I'm honestly so proud of myself for what I did in this run. as a 400 TOA run and I died right at the start of P3 Warden. So all I had left was one super restore and like one dose of that little fly thing that heals some of your prayer. And I made it all the way back through the fight. No healing available. And I couldn't really use the yellow Karis that much because I only had one super restore left. So a ton of prayer flicking and a ton of dodging and I actually beat the fight. So pretty proud of that and I think I might start pushing higher invocations soon. This is really giving me a lot more confidence. Here we go my friends 100 kill count at TOA. I've dropped down the raid level because my god 400 is just too stressful to consistently run for now I'm at 330 getting a 5% unique chance, which is pretty good. Can we get a purple for raid number 100? No that light is Pure white pure depression, you know, it's a white light, but honestly it just brings out nothing but darkness in me so Anyways, still going for that light bearer. We rolled another card, by the way, and it is um, as Mumpton's playing, so I'm pretty much locked here at TOA. Dude, there is no way we actually just got the pet from TOA. That is <laughs> our fifth pet of the year. Oh my god, I got a collection log pop up, and I was like, what? I already have the red gem, and I was like, okay, well, I got a uh, an elite clue scroll, so that's the most loaded TOA chest I've ever seen in my life. We got the gem. We got a clue scroll, and we got the Tumakin's Guardian, baby. That is so stupid. Why am I just killing it with pets this year? Absolutely insane. There is pet number 28, and my first raids pet ever, which is very cool. Now, this is probably the easiest raids pet to get by a long shot. I think with my current points that I'm getting in this raid, it's like 1 in 300 or so to get the pet, which is insanely common, actually. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I am shocked. We got a pet. Let's talk to him. So how are you doing? 
we walk in the light of Tumac and gone he may be, but it's fine. Like, what is all this, bro? I can't read this. This is way too many words. Anyways, let's go to the POH and put him in and introduce him to all of his new little buddies. All right, pal, time to fly in here. And there you go. Now you have joined all your friends wherever you are. God, I have no idea where he is. I can hear him stomping around. It's got a unique little stompy sound, but uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome to get that. I do not have any of the transmogs for him yet, which is rather embarrassing, but we will go for those very soon. I mean, it's five collection log slots. Maybe I'll do it in duos with somebody who's also really good at TOA. I've heard duos and trios are way easier to get the transmogs in, uh, assuming everybody knows what they're doing. But yeah, I'm very happy with that 200 and what is that? 225, ki no, 215 kill count TOA pet. So yeah, I don't even know, man. We've got one more day left in the bingo. It ends tomorrow at like 1 p.m. So I've got to keep going. i got to keep running TOA. But I must say, one of my initial goals for the year was to get 30 pets in total. And we're already at 28. We started the year, what, like 23 or something? And uh, yeah, I don't know. That goal's going to be done by March at this rate. So we might have to up that to like 40 or something. Well, no purples as per usual. But we did get another elite clue. So I'll take that. That makes me mildly happy. So the bingo is over. No, I don't want to talk about the fact that we basically came in last place. All right, I've got a bunch of excuses. Like, I totally deserved a drop from TOA at the end. And if we had gotten a single drop, we would have come in second place. That is how close the bingo was. But it was very fun. And now that that's over, I kind of feel like coming back out here to the Wildy bosses, especially Calvarion here, considering the only thing we're missing from him is the Skull of Vetion. And if we get that, we have our first Wildy boss green log, which is... Honestly, just cool. It's just really cool, and I'm excited to get that. So we're going to grind Calvarion for as long as I can stand it, which is hopefully, like, a lot of kills. Also, the wiki estimated drop rates have been revealed for uh, all the wildy bosses, and it seems that the unique weapon pieces are about 1 in 700 from the singles versions of these bosses. So I should have to kill an average of 700 Calvarion to get it, although the Void Waker pieces are also allegedly 1 in 1,000. So I spooned those really, really hard. So I don't really know if I deserve to get the skull. Uh, I did not see this. You have a funny feeling that you would have received a champion scroll. I didn't know you could still get that message after you finished the challenge, but apparently we rolled the 1 in 5,000 chance to get a champion scroll here from Calvarian just a moment ago. That's insane. Oh boy, we got another dragon pickaxe. Dude, our luck at this boss is so stupid also for those curious because i'm sure someone's gonna ask the estimated drop rate of a d pick from these bosses is one in 350 so we're only about like halfway to the drop rate and we've gotten two of them i mean if this keeps up i feel like i just might have to stay at this boss i'm actually making pretty good money dude you have got to be kidding me another dragon pickaxe what at 172 why are we getting so lucky here it's actually kind of gross how lucky we're getting here and honestly I don't know how to feel about it. Okay, I got attacked at Vetion, and it just takes so long to find a world there. So I decided I'm going to go to Spindle. I hopped about 40 worlds. I didn't find a single free one. So you know what? I am only doing wildy bosses in the morning. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to get out of bed at like 4 a.m., and I'm going to do wildy bosses because I'm guessing that's the only time I can find a free world. All right. This isn't like super significant, but it's just something that feels good. You know, I've been grinding herbivore like crazy, and we got a virtual hunter level 107 hunter. We're nearly at 29 million hunter XP. Uh, I think the only hunting I have done since 99 is just birdhouses and herbivores. So it's a pretty crazy amount of XP to have gotten from that. After getting attacked so much in the wildy over the past little while, I had to know what it feels like on the other side, so I went out and did a little PKing. Yo, wait, look at that. That PK was actually 840k. That's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That's actually not bad. That was a little bit fun. I might actually do a little bit more PKing just to goof around a bit. All right, let's check that guy's loot key. Let's see what he had on him. Oh, 900k. He was actually using a ballista to anti me, which was pretty cool. Oh my gosh, so I've made one point. 8 mil, 1.7 mil, sorry, in like 10 minutes. Is this why people PK? Is PKing really just this good money? This was the most scuffed kill of all time. This guy actually almost killed me with his web weaver bow. He was just slamming into me with it, and thankfully Spindle helped me take him out. All right, that was another sketchy PK, man. Spindle shreds you off, Frey. Let's see what we got. Come on, something good. 700k! He had chinchampas. I don't even think that works with the singles version, does it? I'll take it, though. So, I've been wanting to buy this little bad boy here and test it out for a little while now, the Venator Bow. And I figure now's the perfect time because I am trying to AFK a little bit. I'm working on my hardcore Iron Man. So, I'm going to charge the Venator Bow up with some of this essence here. I think you actually also need to equip arrows. And I've been doing Konar Slayer, which is a great thing to do 
while AFKing until you get a task like Dust Devils in the Catacombs. Then you have to barrage it unless maybe the Venator bow is pretty decent for that. So let's go test it out. So the idea here is that I can kind of just pray and start shooting one of these bad boys and it will just keep bouncing off to other ones. And hopefully while fighting them, I will eventually aggro all of the Dust Devils and then when one dies, it'll just re-aggro it after it respawns. And I think this could work pretty well, actually. It looks like it's dealing some big damage. Is that 34? I mean, that's... That's pretty good, actually. Okay, two things. One, there is literally a person in anglers attacking a jelly. I don't I don't know what I'm looking at, but honestly, I love you, sir. Secondly, I've seen a hit uh, that was 38, so we can almost hit a 40. I'm not even using rigor, and I'm also only using amethyst arrows, so this could definitely be better. All right, so I'm actually having to constantly re-click a dust devil because situations like this will happen where it's just off on its own and nothing is close enough to get aggroed. So I'm thinking maybe the bigger room is better because there's more dust devils, so it'll take longer to actually kill the stack. So yeah, I'm going to try to make my way into there and find a world. So we're getting close to finishing the task, and look at these XP rates. Over 200,000 ranged XP an hour, and over 70,000 Slayer XP per hour. I think it's officially time to say... The Venator bow is uh, is pretty good here. And we just hit 40 million Slayer XP. Please clap. Okay, finally, this is the task that I've been really excited to get because I've heard a lot of people say it is just 100% AFK. Like, I click that Abyssal Demon, and I should just be able to basically walk away from my computer. It will always have time to aggro more of them. At least that's what I've heard. So let's test it out and see if it is as good as people say it is with the Venny bow. So I guess now is as good a time as any to talk about my thoughts on the Venator bow and Abyssal Demons because we just got an Abyssal head. I don't want to talk about it. That's hilarious, honestly. And there's a dude in the other room with the Venator bow, so I think that says enough. This thing is absolutely cracked for this task. It might not be as fast as barraging, but I mean, it is it is pretty dang close, like seriously. I think this is probably the best thing to do on this task, unless you want to put in the high effort barraging. You can basically AFK most of this task that I've done so far, completely AFK. I am actually at Dagonoth Kings on my hardcore right now. That is how much I'm able to focus on my other screen while doing this. It is super nice. And, yeah, I don't know if I could ever go back. I think I might go for this weapon on my hardcore because it is just that nice at Abbey Demons. Also, if anybody knows any other places that this bow is absolutely amazing at, please do let me know. I've tried looking into it, but not a lot of people are talking about it, surprisingly. I feel like this weapon definitely has some uses that we're not completely understanding yet. And, of course, right when I stop recording, we get an Abyssal Whip. Just had to show this on the ground. Also, some of you did inform me that there is a plugin on Runelight where you can make uh, your drops on the ground that are highlighted have an audio attached to it. So, I'm going to figure out the best sound that I can for that. Oh, boy. 163 Dagonoth on Waterbirth Island. You know what that means. Time to head to the Dagonoth Kings. All I need from there is two pets. We're missing Supreme and Prime, and we very fortunately got the Rex pets. So... Nice thing about Dagonoth Kings is at least you usually make a good amount of money from the rings and the noted bones. Starting the trip off strong with the best ring, the Ring of Life. Everybody knows that this is the best thing to get from Dagonoth Kings. Oh, I just got back-to-back -back hard clues. I uh, don't know what to think of that. I'm not going to be able to juggle these or smuggle them out of here. I'm pretty sure it's literally impossible to make it back to the Dagonoth Kings cave before one of these despawns. But I will take one because, you know, stacking a thousand hard clues might as well. This is so great, but this is also so sad. Since the forestry update got announced, dragon axes have spiked in price. I really don't know why. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's like four times more dragon axes in the game than there are people. But for some reason, they're like 200,000 gold right now. Unfortunately, I don't have any inventory space for this. And normally, this is the part where I would alk them and make a funny joke. But I guess I'll juggle the dragon axe. I... Is this really worth 200k? I must apologize for the mortal sin of not recording when it was on the ground. I understand. You're all very upset with me. And my whole YouTube channel will be deleted tomorrow. But we got a mud battle staff. I don't know how much this thing is nowadays. Let's see. 30,000 gold. Okay, yes. Finally, the luck is turning around this task. We have nabbed ourselves the most overpowered ring. The Warrior Ring. Although I do have faith that maybe, just maybe, the new rings they bring out with Desert Treasure 2 will require the Dagonoth King rings to charge, so I could actually see a future where the Warrior Ring is worth the same amount as the Berserker Ring and the Archer's Ring. I know you might call me crazy now, but come back in eight months and call me crazy. Oh yes, thank goodness we got another Ring of Life. I was beginning to get a little worried there because we only have 34 Dagonoths left on task, but there we go. Ring of Life number two acquired. That means 4,000 gold made this trip. Pretty solid. And here we go, the last kill of the task. Ooh, a six with a scythe. That is 
a two with the scythe. Okay, this only happens when I record. I swear, this thing slaps every time I don't have the recorder open. But there's the task done. We uh, got a warrior's ring and a dragon axe, which is pretty neato. Thankfully, no country for old men kept me company, so I didn't completely lose my mind. And you know what, doggone it, that's still 1.8 mil. Now, if you take the amount of money we lost on using the scythe and the saying staff, we probably just about broke even, maybe. I promise this is the first and probably last time you will ever see this, but I'm pretty excited that we got a Gargoyles task in the Slayer Tower because that means we can go try Grotesque Guardians with something new. The Venator bo- wait, <laughs> wait, why do I have the bow I meant to grab the Venator bow, I swear. Look, they're they're both purple, okay? Look, they kind of look similar, okay? I, they, I don't want to hear it. So anyways, as I was doing my darndest to say, I'm excited to try the Venator bow out at the Grotesque Guardians. And now it sounds like kind of a weird weapon to be using at this boss, but I've heard that it is best in slot if you can lure the melee over to the Ranger. I don't remember which one is which. And it bounces off the melee, so it'll hit the Ranger twice, which is apparently better DPS than the Blowpipe. And I've heard from many people that you can do Orb Skip pretty much every single time if you're using the Venator bow. It is that good, so let's put it to the test and see if that's true. All right, here we go. We just hit 29, 24, 35, 26. Oh my god, what? This thing shreds. Okay, that was obviously some lucky hits. It's not going to hit like that every single time, but oh my goodness. Did you see how fast that was? Are you kidding me? Okay, this thing is awesome. This might actually make me like this boss again. What? It's a little bit finicky, though, trying to get it into the right spot where it hits Dawn twice because of the way the bow works. It has really weird range, and it goes from the center tile of the monster. So sometimes I have to, like, run around to even get it to hit Dawn twice. So, I mean, it's not as good as it was on that first kill, and a lot of the times it screws up, and I just get the orbs healing or anyways. But I'm sure I'll figure this out eventually. Well, there's one trip. We did 10 kills, which is a pretty good trip here. I gotta say, the Venator Bow method is much better, and when you get it set up right, it is quite consistent. Wow, look at this guy right here, YouTube luck. What a massive nerd, honestly. Looks like he's fishing. Ew, gross. Anyways, I'm still not doing this task at the boss. I absolutely hate this boss. That's 1186 kill count, and I mean, I know one day maybe I'll go for all pets or something, but I just cannot be asked to kill this boss right now. It is easily my least favorite boss in the game. I don't know about y'all. Maybe there's one grotesque guardian enthusiast out there, but it is just so boring to me. And there's the perfect next Grandmaster task. Time to send some challenge mode raids with the boys from the CC. Hopefully we can get some loot. Who is that? Praise Foot? Sounds like a total noob to me. Imagine this is an augury scroll. Oh, the spoiler? You spoil it. Oh, toxic. Guaranteed. Why? Are you kidding? That's Wait, that's back to back, to Twisted off. Buckler? <laughs> Wait, is the split really that big? All right, thank you very much. Oh, oh my no god! Way. No way! Oh yes, there we go. Shield left half from Abby Demons. We're adding that to the collection log counter. Uh, after this task, hopefully I don't forget. We can see how many shield left halves I've gotten over the years. It's a pretty fun one to stack up. All right, let's see it. Let's see how many shield left halves. We have gotten 18 of them in my entire career on this account. Of course, that's only post-collection log release, but still, 18 shield left halves is pretty good. Okay, you're not going to believe it. You're genuinely not going to believe it because I don't believe it. I'm sitting here editing this Hardcore Iron Man video. I've been sitting here for like five hours doing it. And, uh, well, at some point, I wasn't paying attention. We actually just got the Herbivore pet. <laughs> at 3,800 harvests. Oh my goodness. Listen, this is why you do herbivore while you are, uh, you know, editing a video. Okay, I think that's a that's that's a pretty good pet. Okay. Genuinely, what is my pet luck this year? There's collection log slot 1206 and pet number 29. We just need one more pet to hit 30. Oh my goodness, that's so awesome. And also Herbivore is under the miscellaneous section of the log, so we are getting ever so close to finishing that. Once we get the full Evil Chicken outfit, I will like full-on commit to finishing this log if we don't already have every other slot. So uh, looking pretty good. 29 pets. God, let's talk to Herbie. What does Herbie even say? Tell me, do you like avocado? I am an insectivore, but even if I wasn't, I'd hate avocado. Why not? It's delicious. I don't know why people... Like, Dude, I can't. There's so much dialogue. There's so much. I can't read for that long. Anyways, uh, let's put him in the little POH here. And now we have a disgusting amount of little fellas running around. 
And now for the total loot from this last session of Herbal Borkus. Occasionally I sell the grimy herbs that I get from it. And honestly, some of this might be from other stuff, but let's just pretend it's all from Herbivore. 8.2 million gold. Not too shabby. Herbivore is actually pretty okay money. I would guess it's around like half a million gold per hour or something like that. Nothing too extravagant, but it's good hunter XP. And you can make a little bit of money. Plus, get a pet if you get absolutely spooned like me. And so I think I'm going to be ending the video off here. I keep saying that I don't think the pet luck can continue, but it just keeps continuing. So I'm not going to say that. We might get another pet in the next video, and that'll put us at 30 pets. We'll see. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you could, please do leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff that makes the algorithm love me. And I appreciate you all very much. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.